Okay. Sorry, just now before we get started, a couple people came in just as soon as this was. Okay. So let's go ahead and get down to business. Now, we're actually st ending, we ended our last chapter last time. And today, we're going to get started on a new chapter. So, last time we were learning about our last chapter, we were learning about the basics of trigonometry. What is the definition of the trigonometric functions? What's the definition of sine, cosine, tangent? We use them for solving problems involving finding an unknown sides or unknown angles. We learned about the inverse functions, inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. Now today, we're gonna to get started on the next chapter. Hmm, sorry. Which is a little bit more, a little bit more, how should I, it's a little bit more analytic. We'll be spending less time working with, working with, you know, just plugging in numbers to get an angle, and we'll be spending a lot more time working with equations. Now, along the way, one of the most useful tools that we'll have to work with are these things called identities. So today, we're going to learn what identities are. And uh, we're gonna start learning what, we're, today we're gonna start learning what identities are. Tomorrow, we're gonna actually hit the rest of this objective, which is all the simplifying trig expressions. All right. So what is an identity? Well, before we can understand what an identity is, let's let's talk about let's talk about the equal sign. Now, equal signs can represent several things. It can indicate that a mathematical sentence is true. For example, one plus one equals two. This is always true. One plus one equals two or Let's say, uh, buh, buh, buh. x times x minus 4 equals x squared minus 4x. You know, you can distribute this in in order to get this. These are called open sentences.
Oh, sorry. No, he's, my bad. That's not open sentence. Open sentences are the next thing. <laughs> my day brain. Okay. These are called ugh. true sentences, which, takes the, which is different from open sentences, which we're going to look at next. Now, the equal sign can also represent So, for example, let's say we have x squared plus 3 equals 7. Now, this is not always true. Now, in this case, it would be true if x is 2 or if x is negative 2. Either of those would make this true. But here, this equal sign is really representing that this has the possibility of being true. Well, these are called. open sentences. So. Hmm. Now, the thing about true sentences is that they are always true, no matter what. Whereas, Open sentences are only true for certain inputs. And you can solve the equation to find it. Okay, so the bottom line, true sentences, always true. Open sentences, sometimes true, or only true for certain inputs. Now, there is one last situation, which is a sentence that is true except for certain inputs. So it's true almost all the time, except for certain places where it fails to be true. 
And that's what we're, and those, that's what we're gonna look at today. Now, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? All right, take your time. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Now the last situation where I use an equal sign is as previously mentioned called a trig identity. Or uh, it's not trig identity. It's identities that are true except So, what's an example of an identity? Where's my... An example of an identity would be something like... Example of an identity would be something like x squared minus 1 over x plus 1 equals x minus 4.
So, so this equation, this equation, or this equation is always true, except for when x is negative one. Uh, x equals negative one is not part of the domain of the left side. If I plug in negative one, then I'd be divided by zero. So that's not allowed. But it's true for every other number. It's true if I plug in zero. It's true if I plug in 10. It's true if I plug in pi or negative 37.6 or positive one billion and two. It is always true except for this situation for when x equals negative one. Hmm. Now, the real question is, how do we find identities? Now, the general rule, or the general idea, is that if Or if you can rewrite one side, as the other side, then you have an identity. So for example, this identity is true. I can rewrite this left side to look like this. Well, x squared, x, I could rewrite the top here as x squared minus one squared. Now that's a difference of squares. Using the difference of squares formula, I can rewrite this as x plus one, x minus one, over x plus one, we cancel and we're left with x minus one. So x squared minus one over x plus one equals x minus one. So we have an identity. Make sense? All right. Whether it makes sense or not, let's, uh, we need to move on. So uh, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? So nobody will yell at me if I take this away. All right, great. Now, it turns out that these, that identities are very important and very useful in trigonometry. And there's just a whole, 
of uh, there's just a ton of different uh, identities in trigonometry. Today we're going to look at some of the for today we're going to look at some of the basic ones, and these are just a few of the identities. There are just tons of these things. Oh. Oh, this should... So there are a ton of trig identities, and we'll take a look at all of these. Uh, I'll try to I'll explain briefly why these are true. Uh, and tomorrow I'll actually use the trig identities. We won't really have time to use them today. Today we're just going to learn what they are. Now, the basic trig functions spring directly from the definitions of the trig identities. I computerized some words there. The basic trig identities spring directly from the definitions of the trig functions. So, for example, you remember how uh, cosecant is the uh, reciprocal of sum. That's an identity right there. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. And likewise, I can multiply both sides by sine, divide both sides by cosine to rewrite this as a different identity. That's sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. Easy enough. And there's three others. You can do the same thing for secant. I'm sorry, I need to, gonna need to squeeze these pretty tightly in order to put them all in. But the general idea is simple anyway. And finally, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. In tangent. Is there a several of coated? And these collectively are called the reciprocal functions, or reciprocal identities. Sorry. Now, there's also two other identities that come directly from the definition of trig functions. Now, you'll remember that sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse and cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. 
Now, if you take that opposite over hypotenuse and divide it by the adjacent over the hypotenuse, then the hypotenuses will cancel, meaning that sine over cosine will give us opposite over adjacent is so tangent this side ugh, over cosine. And if I take the reciprocal of both sides, the reciprocal of sine over cosine is cosine over sine. And the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. And these are called the quotient identity. All right, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Let me know when you're ready. Oh, you got it. Okay. So those are the basic identities, but there's a lot more than just basic identities. Now these next identities are called the Pythagorean identities because they come out of Pythagor of uh, the Pythagorean theorem. Ident. Now, how do the Pythagorean identities come about? Pythagorean identities happen because of the Pythagorean theorem. So let's say that I have some trunk. Okay. I have some angle theta, which means we have an opposite. We have a hypotenuse, and we have an adjacent. What? No, those are in the wrong places. Uh, and J's. Okay. So, given that this is true, we could call this A, we could call this B, we could call this C. Now, now A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? That's the Pythagorean theorem. We know that's true. Now,
Now, if we set C equal to one, then sine of theta will just be equal to the opposite. Cosine of theta will be equal to the adjacent, which means that And then if you just plug those, or yeah. but the opposite is itself A, the adjacent is itself B, and the hypotenuse, which we said equal to one, means that when we plug when we plug those guys into here, we We get sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. But let me clear it. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals and this one is a very very important formula so make sure that you can commit it to memory it's not particularly difficult but it is very very important now if we use the other identities, you know, rewrite, if we use some of the other identities, you know, rewrite uh, cosine as one over secant, and then do a little bit of algebra, then we can rewrite it to one plus tangent or one plus tan squared theta equals secant squared theta and that of course can also rewrite Or why did I say of course? And this we could also rewrite to this. All right, and these are the Pythagorean identities. Okay, yeah, well, so, and that's that. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away?
All right. Now the next, these next ones are called the co-function identities. All right. So, and here's all of them. Sine of pi over two minus theta equals cosine theta. Tan of pi over two minus theta equals coast. Cotangent. After a coast. Okay, so take about 30 seconds and get all these down. Okay, so where do these come from? Now, the first thing to remember that pi halves radians equals 90 degrees. So you could replace each of these pi halves with 90 degrees, and it would still be true. Now, why is this important? Because of these formulas come from the fact that angles can be complementary. from complementary angles. Consider this triangle. Let's say we have the triangle A, B, C, which means you have the sides A, B, C. Now, sine of angle A would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. That would be A over C, wouldn't it? Now, A over C would also be cosine of B. This angle's adjacent is A, its hypotenuse is C, so cosine of B would be A over C. Yeah, fair enough. And remember that all these angles add up to 90 degrees, right? So that means That because so uh, we know that angle A or we know that angle A plus angle B is going to equal ninety degrees, yeah, for pi over two radians. Now what this means that we could also say that angle B is ninety minus angle A. So we could, with all this stuff together, we could, that means that we could rewrite the sine of angle A, which remember is A over C, 
and is going to be the same as cosine of angle B. Ah, but we can write B as 90 minus A. Or we convert that to radians. To have pi over 2 minus a. Either way, we have an identity. Specifically, that identity. And all of these come about doing that same process. I'm not going to repeat it for every one, but that's the general idea. These angles all come about because of angle complementarity, or because of uh, because of the properties of complementary. My phone's going up. Hold up. I don't care. Now, will you yell at me if I take this away? Now, we're almost done. There's one last set of identities for us to look, for us to look at here. And these are the odd even identities. And the whiteboard. Here we go. Uh, let's do, okay, the last one is the even odd identities. Now, you may remember that way back when we were talking about when, about when a function is even versus when a function is odd. Now, So, uh, these functions spring directly from the definition of evenness and oddness, and the uh, and the fact that sine is sine is odd, cosine is even, and sine is odd, cosine is even, and uh, tangent is odd. So, you know, I think we have time to remind us about evenness and oddness. Even functions
have the property f of negative x equals f of x. Plugging a negative number into, into a uh, even function gives you the same result as plugging in the positive version. Of Odd functions have the property f of negative x equals negative f of x. If you plug a negative number into a function, that is the same as plugging in the positive version of that number, but you get an extra negative. Now, sine and tangent are odd. Cosine is even. Therefore, Sine of negative x equals negative sine of x. Cosine of negative x equals cosine of positive x. And tangent of negative x equals negative tangent of x. Now, if we take the reciprocal of both sides of each of these, we get the reciprocal versions. So, cosecant of negative x equals negative cosecant of x. Secant of negative x equals secant of x. And cotangent of negative x equals negative cotangent of x. Fair enough? Oh, and players. And uh, there we go. That's the last of the identities. Now, to be clear, this is not a complete list of trigonometric identities. There are tons and tons of trigonometric identities. You can, people can and have published entire books filled with page after page after page of trigonometric identities. And they're, but these are kind of the basic ones. These are the ones that are, they're, they're our building. Any further identities will often be developed because of these identities. Okay. So I think we can leave it off there. So today we learned what identities are. Identities are statements that are true unless you plug in certain numbers. Now most of the time with identities, you don't usually bother typing, writing down what those, what those are. But it is important to remember that they're there. We learned uh, how we can find identities. If you, can re if you can rewrite one thing to another thing, then they're identities. Um, uh, and we wrote down a whole ton of trig identities. And that is that. That's where we can leave. That's where we'll leave off. Now, there won't be a check for understanding today because today we are really just looking at the list of identities. 
tomorrow we're actually going to use the identities to, to simplify expressions, solve equations, that sort of thing. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.